Pikmin, released in 2001, follows Captain Olimar getting stranded on a planet with a broken ship. He only has 30 days worth of resources to stay alive and must collect enough parts of his ship before those 30 days run out or he will meet his tragic end. Luckily for him, he comes across a species that he names Pikmin, who seem to be more than happy to help him out, as he also helps them out. The Pikmin are a seemingly endangered species due to their lack of fighting abilities, but as they help Olimar collect his ship parts, Olimar teaches them how to fight and helps them grow in numbers as well. A relatively simple premise with a lot of details that make for a very enjoyable experience. This is probably one of the more mainstream games I've reviewed this month, but it's still somewhat obscure. I think more people probably recognize Olimar due to his appearances in Smash Brothers, not unlike Ness or Marth. But there was certainly a lot of hype when Pikmin 4 finally got announced. I myself first tried the game out at a Walmart when they had a demo set up. Really liked it, and then never touched it again until October this year, when I recorded a series of Stort for his channel. Look out for that, by the way, link in the description to the first episode. I've always been intrigued by this series, but I just never really got around to it. Now that I finally recorded the whole series and then replayed the game on my own, how do I feel about Pikmin? I really love it. And there's a great chance that if I do this theme month again next year, 2, 3, and 4 will also get videos. Hell, I've already started too. I love Louie, he's such a piece of shit. From what I can tell of 2, the game is offering you a lot more freedom with exploration by not rushing you to collect things, where Pikmin 1 gives you a 30 day limit. I think both have value and I could see different people having different preferences. One lets you stop and smell the roses, and the other doesn't want you to stop your objective for even a second. I think the 30 day time limit with the stakes being you will die and never see your family again makes for a stronger narrative than a big treasure hunt with no time limit at all, but I think 2 compensates with all of Olimar's notes on different treasures and creatures, as well as the inclusion of Louie and the boss. The sequel has a more easygoing story, but it isn't lacking the personality Pikmin 1 had, in fact it might actually have more of it. But narrative wise, yeah, 1's definitely more interesting. What I really like about the first Pikmin story is how dark it gets. It has a pretty light-hearted presentation, but it is no secret what's happening is very scary for both Olimar and the Pikmin. It's a life or death situation for both of them, and I think the game communicates this really well through Olimar's journals at the end of each day, as well as the song Enouta, a song that comes from the perspective of the Pikmin expressing their loyalty to Olimar and fear for their own survival. I mean, I call it fear, but hearing the lyrics translated to English, it actually comes off more as just plain acceptance. Some of these lines are pretty sad, to be honest. More so than I would have expected. The gameplay is a lot of fun, but it's stuff like this that takes Pikmin from being a fun Nintendo game to potentially one of the best Nintendo games ever made. I will always love Nintendo characters for their good designs and fun gameplay mechanics, but it's rare that a game comes out from them where I feel this level of investment in the world and characters, and I know I'm not alone on that. There are people who do runs of this game where they don't let a single Pikmin die, and that just sounds undoable to me after my two playthroughs, but people have grown attached enough to these little guys to where they can't even seem to enjoy the game if any of them die. A little excessive? Maybe, but I do think it says a lot about how well written the game is. And just because I know someone is going to get defensive about what I said a few seconds ago, I do think there are other Nintendo games of good writing and narratives. I'm just saying you don't get them every day. Pikmin is definitely a case of there being more on the surface if you bother reading the text or research in the game. But another great thing about the writing in this game is it's not intrusive to the gameplay. It never brings anything to a halt. Now do I have any problems with this game? Yes. I hear this gets better in later installments. Hell, I think it's already been better just for my gameplay of two. But the Pikmin's AI is really bad sometimes in the first one. Pikmin in large groups will stop following you over the tiniest things. The most common occurrence is they'll just get stuck behind a wall if you make a turn. But sometimes it's more irritating than that, where they will go out of their way to disobey you and collect nectar lying on the ground or pick up something you didn't tell them to pick up, which isn't a big deal if you catch it right away, but sometimes you don't see them do it. And then you're like, oh shit, I'm missing like 10 Pikmin. I know I just got done talking about how this game makes you feel for these creatures, but the gameplay sometimes does the exact opposite, making you want to give some of them the fucking death penalty. I remember when playing this with Stort, we got 
gathered a bunch of yellow Pikmin on the top of this ledge to grab a ship part, and instead of grabbing it, they just jumped off the edge into the water. This was so frustrating that we restarted the entire day. The second time, they did pick up the item they were supposed to, and then they jumped into the water. That was their last chance, the blue Pikmin took over for the delivery, and the yellows just had to accept their fate. We gave them every chance that they deserved. Does the AI ruin the game? No, not really. It's a little annoying, but it's pretty easy to recover them. And if you leave a few behind, it sucks, but it's still playable. Although again, we're talking about how fucking sad this game is sometimes. Yeah, if you leave any behind, there's this cutscene that plays that shows them trying to run to the ship as you take off, and they get fucking killed on screen. Sad, man. Fucking sad. But then again, in Brawl, Captain Falcon murders a hundred of them like it's nothing. And this is played for a laugh. I think that the AI works more often than it doesn't work. But yeah, it's a little irritating when it doesn't work. Doesn't ruin the game, doesn't make the gameplay bad, it's just definitely something that needed improvement, and they improved it, so hell yeah! Pikmin has its fan base and probably doesn't need an endorsement from me, but if you've ever been curious about it, I'd say it's more accessible now than ever with all four games being on Switch, so consider checking it out if you haven't already. I don't regret finally picking up the first two at all, and I look forward to making it to three and four since I've heard the series has only gotten better since then. But I also think that one and two have stood the test of time really well. They're both a lot of fun to play. Maybe I will cover them next year, but for now I'm glad I was finally at least able to talk about one of them. Mm -hmm.